the Technici are serving lunch on the experimental 50-foot high platform. A core group is regularly making the extra effort to climb up here, including bandit boys Mercury, Togar, and Milo. The high platform was project manager Lona Drosher Nielsen's first risky experiment. Designed to coax those who prefer ground dwelling into the trees. Ten months later, and the high platform is successfully attracting over half of the community. But Lona's latest innovation, allowing free access between the neighboring islands, is off to a bad start. The Technici have found Mungus hiding in the forest and are encouraging her to join her classmates for lunch. But Mungus is still traumatized from her clash with Noor. And not even food will persuade her to join the rest of the community. I've noticed that she doesn't dare to come into the, the rumble tumble of having like 30, 40 orangutans around her. I think the worst thing that probably could happen to Mangus is that she's not really going to be able to make it on the island. If Mangus doesn't adapt soon, Lona may have to make the hardest decision of all. Eventually, who knows, she might just end up in a sanctuary and not really be released into the wild. Because she might not quite have that, what it takes. But Mungus's difficulties are about to be overshadowed as Lona's bold open border experiment gathers momentum. One of the first intruders to Orangutan Island is returning with an old score to settle. As the noon heat builds, the bandit boys are taking some downtime. With Milo cozy in a penthouse nest built especially for his siesta. Suddenly, he's disturbed by a stranger. Palace Island girl gangster, Sela. Milo pretends he's asleep. And she moves on. But what's that? Another Palace Islander, who Milo has encountered before. It's 11-year-old Mac. Luckily, he doesn't see Milo. Last year, Mac terrorized the youngsters on Orangutan Island. Milo let him know he wasn't wanted. But it took honorary bandit boy Daisy chase Mac off. Mac's arrival is attracting a curious crew, including Chen Chen and the always nosy Saturnus. Mac eyeballs Chen Chen, while Saturnus tells him, back off from a safe distance. But Mac's not intimidated by someone five years his junior. Chen Chen is offended by Mac's attitude and sees another chance to show off. Mac wants a scrap, so Chen Chen obliges. Mac pushes in from the right, but Chen Chen won't back down. So Mac responds by fighting dirty. Saturnus roots for his buddy. And Chen Chen goes the distance. Leaving Mac cowering in defeat. Though Chen Chen's just showing off, there's no doubt that he can defend his friends when he's in the mood. With more of Mac's buddies likely to show up, Chen Chen could be forced to quit clowning and get ready for combat. 
With the water level dropping so dramatically, Hamlet is heading to his feeding platform for the first time in several days. But Hamlet doesn't really like the water. Especially when he stands on a sharp object. He's impatient to eat. And at the sound of the approaching boat, he performs a brand new task. Clearing away the trash to make room for the food. Hamlet has observed the Technici cleaning the platforms many times in the past. And today, he uses his super intelligence to mimic what he's seen. Hoping it will speed up his lunch delivery. There's plenty for all, but Hamlet is in no mood to share. So he doesn't notice the familiar face from his old home on Palace Island. It's Mac, disguised as a branch. Hamlet steals Mac's lunch. Then he confiscates his fine coat. There's no question who's boss. Suddenly, Max spies little Milo. And probably remembering Milo's less than warm welcome on his last visit, Max grabs Milo to settle that old score. Hamlet's busy with lunch, but Milo's cries become desperate. Milo goes to Hamlet for protection, and Max sees the scrawny little guy is one of Hamlet's family. This unexpected compassion proves the close bonds being built in this orangutan society.